Welcome to the Finer Femininity Catholic Women's Podcast, a podcast for Catholic women with traditional values, women who are striving for sanctity, learning to be more joyful and feminine in their vocations by studying Our Lady, the saints, and revered Catholic men and women. And now your host, mother of 11, grandmother of 26, Leanne Vanderputten. My name is Leanne Vanderputten and I run the blog Finer Femininity. I'm here today with my second oldest daughter Teresa and we thought we'd talk to you today about our very favorite time of the year which is Advent and Christmas. You know out in the world they have the magic of Christmas right? Well we have so much Catholic charm in our heritage and all the customs and traditions that we do in our homes. This is what we need to be doing with our families and with our children so that they see the beauty and the depth of our Catholic faith. So today, um, well, before I get started, I would like to um, show you the book that I have. It's called The Catholic Mother's Traditional Advent Journal. And it talks about a lot of these customs, and it has checklists and things like that that you can, as you do the customs and traditions, and you can tweak it to your own style. You don't have to be the Advent queen and do everything, but it's just a nice little help uh, to get you going. You can go to uh, Meadows of Grace, so it's www.meadowsofgrace.com in order to purchase this, or it's available on Amazon too. So while we'll get started then, um, so we, we have Thanksgiving, and then um, right after that, we have the first Sunday of Advent. And one of the first things that we do, well, first we get out our Advent wreath. And um, I have a really neat Advent wreath. It's something that somebody made me that has dowels, um, and you can put tea lights in it. And the dowels are painted uh, purple and then the one pink. So you can keep switching out the tea lights, and there's, you know, no dripping and things like that. So that's really neat. But you can have all kinds of Advent wreaths and come up with neat ideas. Teresa, what do you do for your Advent wreath? Well, for the past couple of years, we've done it more simple. Um, We have a big block of wood that my husband uh, drilled four holes in, and then we do the three uh, purple and the pink, and then I make sort of a wreath around it, so it's not actually a wreath. We call it our advent block. Um, But then recently, too, I was reading the wreath itself because of the uh, going around in a circle signifies the eternity of God and so this year I'm definitely even though we'll probably still do the block I'm definitely going to focus on having my wreath in a circle like there is a meaning for that and before this year I I hadn't realized that Hmm, that's neat that's neat and that's just that's what's neat about our faith we're always learning we're always growing finding out things in the past, during our Advent, when my all my kids were small, uh, we we were pretty. Um, we we didn't sing any Christmas songs at all. We were, you know, just really careful about that. We actually didn't do Christmas gifts. Um, we did um, a few little things at Saint Nicholas Day, um, but we still had a beautiful Christmas. Uh, it was all surrounded by the stable and. Um, a good meal with company, etc. And since then, we've morphed into other things. I have older children, and so we, we do it a little bit differently now. So, um, so yeah, we get out the Advent wreath. We, we try to get, now throughout the years, sometimes I wasn't quite ready for Advent. And, you know, I think you all probably experience this where you're digging around and looking for candles, ordering them on Amazon on the Sunday of Advent, things like that. So it's good the week before to plan and kind of get ready so that when that Sunday hits, you're ready to go. Um, the other thing, November 30th and uh, is the St. Andrew's Feast Day, and that's when we start our St. Andrew Novena. It's also called the Hail and Blessed. Well, we call it that sometimes. Um, and the Christmas Novena. It's the one that starts with Hail and Blessed be the hour and the moment in which the Son of God was born, etc. You say that 15 times every day all through Advent, ending on Christmas Eve. And we've always done this. Um, Our little kids, even when they're three years old, four years old, know how to, uh, because they hear it so many times, we repeat it 15 times each night, they know how to lead it. Somebody leads the first part, 
and then everybody answers with the second part and we usually start with the mom and or the dad and the mom and then the oldest all down to the the youngest that can do it with us anyway it's a very powerful novena and we have seen amazing results by saying this Christmas Navina. Do you have anything to say about that Navina, Teresa? I know for, for me, I was just thinking about this. That's what starts for our family, the Christmas preparation. And in my head, I have such great memories. As soon as we started the Hell and Blesseds, we knew that St. Nicholas Day was coming. We knew that Christmas was around the corner. So it has really positive memories. And the same with my kids. So as soon as we start the Hail and Blesseds, the stable goes up within a day or two, and the whole preparation starts. Nice. Yeah, so what a great way to start our Advent season with a, a powerful novena like that. Um, our stable. Uh we have really focused on the stable in the past and especially, I mean, the first 15 years, we didn't really do gifts and that we, so the stable was just part of the charm and the magic of Christmas for us. So, and it varied. I mean, we wouldn't do it on the first Sunday of Advent. We, we maybe tried to get it when all my kids were small, you know, it was hard to get it done right at the first Sunday of Advent. But anyway, right within that first week, we would get out her big table, and it was an eight-foot-long table, and we'd find a place for it. And then the kids would go out and get logs and rocks and dirt and moss and um, those berries. What are those berries called? The, the orange, yeah, the wild orange, berries. Yeah, they would get those, <clears throat> and we would make the beginnings of a beautiful stable scene. And it was different every year because you found different you know, uh, stumps, different uh, tree mushrooms and things like that. So every year that cave was formed differently, but, but ours was huge. And then we would put blue or green lights all over it. And then as the uh, Advent season went on, um, we would add the different things from the spiritual Christmas crib, which is in here each day. There's cobwebs, there's provisions, whatever it is. And we would add that in um, and then as it got closer to Christmas, we would put in the Holy Family and we waited till, I would wait until the kids um, were all ready for midnight mass. And if I had the presence of mind, I would go and find the hidden or the baby Jesus that was hidden and sneak it into the manger so that when they came home from midnight mass, baby Jesus was miraculously there. Is that Thoughts? Yeah, that's that's what in our family that's what we do like mom said it doesn't always happen the first um sunday of advent although i love to do that but there's many times i've been pregnant and sick or it just hasn't happened right away but it, there's so much focus on the christmas staple and for us we go out back we take our wagon we get rocks and stones a lot of times it's bitter cold that time of year then we come in um and you know decorate it together the kids do, it's a huge thing and it very much centers around more of the um just the thought process of jesus coming the preparation um not all our decorations have gone up but the christmas staple has yes and it's a beautiful thing and that's so you know by doing that we are obviously focusing on the most important part of Christmas. Um, the other thing that I started to do in the past, we would get our Christmas tree really close to Christmas and either Christmas Eve or the day before we would decorate it. And now that got to be very difficult um, because there's just so much last minute preparation. So what we have done in the past, I'd say five or six years, it's also sometimes hard to find a tree that close to Christmas. Mm -hmm. So now I get the tree um, when everybody else does. And um, when we set up the stable in that, I put the tree up and we dress it with uh, purple bows, purple little birds. And I have a beautiful little um, uh, knitted uh, St. Nicholas that I won at a raffle from uh, the... Um, Sarah at Baby Steps to Jesus. Um, anyway, it's beautiful, and I put it in the middle of the uh, Christmas tree. And, and that's our Advent tree, and we keep it like that. So it's bare except for the purple, 
and we keep it like that until it gets closer to Christmas. So I have the tree already. It's not quite so stressful to get the tree up at the last minute. Um, thoughts on the tree at all, Teresa? Yeah, um, especially as a young mom, with um, I'm due with my fifth in February. Um, I like to wait till close to Christmas to put up our tree, but I found the same thing, that it can be more stress the day before you're trying to cook and get right. ready. So for us, we buy it early too, but we cut it, leave it in the garage, and then usually it's the weekend before Christmas. Like this year, Christmas is on a Wednesday, so we might decorate it on a Saturday. Uh, so it is closer to Christmas for us. Um, we haven't done the Advent tree in the past, but it's a happy medium for us right. instead of just trying to scramble on Christmas Eve and get out and give our cookies to our friends or whatever else we do. And just so I'm not pulling my hair out, right. it just, it makes it very festive close to Christmas, but then it still puts the importance on being very close to the season, right. to the feast day. Right. And, and then one other thing we have done, now I'm a little sporadic with this because we, we didn't do it in the past, but I think it's beautiful. And that's the blessing of the Christmas tree. So, mm -hmm. if, you know, and, and there's a checklist in here. And on the checklist, it, it says, you know, you're supposed to do the, uh, have it all checked off the week before Advent. And one of the things is the holy water. Um, mm -hmm. Because the, the father then of the house... Um, can take the holy water and then the blessing of the Christmas tree is in the book and um, family gathers around and he blesses the Christmas tree with the holy water and it's, it's just, what an awesome it's thing yeah mm -hmm. so um, and then well, so okay so we have advent rolling you know we've got the stable up etc and then before we know it it's St. Nicholas Day so and St. Nicholas Day has always been a pretty big thing for us um we uh we like to celebrate it it's it's kind of different every year in the past i've done a puppet show for the kids we pulled the couch out my daughter virginia made two uh puppets one of um saint nicholas and one of black pete and then we just kind of winged it and we would throw the stockings out to the kids and um, kind of joke around about the one who's been bad and throw out one of straw, but just kidding, and then throw them out, the real one. So, um, so that's it. we've done that in the past. Um, but um, at this point, we, uh, like this year, we're going to have the, it lands on family night. Every Friday is family night here when the family comes. So I have 11 children. Six of them are married. And I have 29 grandchildren. Most of them come on family night. And this year, December 6th, um, lands on family night. So we decided and uh, that we're going to do, you know, a little a little St. Nicholas celebration. So we will probably watch the St. Nicholas cartoon. Um, we'll have pop popcorn. We're going to do coloring pictures of St. Nicholas. We will do little goodies. Now, I think everyone in their own families is, or will do their own stockings mm -hmm. in the morning, but we'll have a little styrofoam cup with a, a clementine orange in it and a candy cane. We like to get our stuff from the house store because we don't like, we try to keep it as healthy as we can. And then just some goodies just to make it special. Any thoughts on that, Teresa? Well, and for us growing up, St. Nicholas Day, I felt was almost as celebrated as Christmas, just like it was something we so looked forward to. And um, there was many years that mom and dad couldn't afford gifts and we'd always get a gift at Christmas from grandma, which we looked forward to. But St. Nicholas Day was always important and we waited for it and we got our stockings. And so when I, um, when I got married, my mother-in-law makes us beautiful homemade stockings, like the big knitted ones with our names. And they always did theirs on Christmas Day, which I did for a few years, but it, it felt like a lot to me. It was a lot to do all the gifts 
and the stockings, and I just wasn't used to that. That wasn't our tradition. So over the years, my husband and I decided to do the St. Nicholas Day, and the kids just love it. They call it Stocking Day. <laughs> they count the days right now. I think we're nine days out or something <laughs> like that. Um, and for us, too, we try and do it mostly natural. In fact, I just put a few fruits in it few nuts, maybe a licorice stick, but they still look forward to that. And it's just something, even though we're preparing and it's a season of getting ready, it's like a feast in between that you can celebrate and really enjoy. And it's, to me, I have such great memories too. Like mom said, um, the puppet shows. Uh, to this day, I remember when they threw out a stocking of straw for my uncle, my mom's brother. And we just thought that was awesome as kids. So just really good memories. The kids really look forward to it. And we do make it a big deal, but just by doing little things. Right, right. So little things, you know, that they appreciate. So um, gifts. Um, you know, I talked about in the past, we didn't have, uh, my husband was in the construction field and Christmas was sparse. So we didn't have a whole lot of money for gifts. We also really wanted to focus on the reason for the season. And so we would, um, so I, I would do little gifts in the stockings. Um, but then as the years went by, you know, I we started to morph into more, okay, we will, you know, for Jesus's birthday, we're going to do the Christmas gifts. And then we stuck to more the natural goodies and things like that on St. Nicholas Day. So. Um, and now we have an absolute blast doing gifts. Um, you know, it, it's not a pressure thing. There are some of, the, of uh, we like I said, we have six that are married. Some of the kids, you know, don't have the money. I mean, they to buy for everybody. And so actually, well, Teresa, you talk about the gift exchange that you've come up with the other couples. So for us and for my husband and myself, he's also at uh, construction. <clears throat> so around Christmas time is not when we usually have a huge money flow. Um, so for me, I have started to shop throughout the year. So when we get a paycheck, I'll buy a gift so that it takes that stress out of it and just makes it more fun and more about the Christmas season again. And then it got to be so much where we were trying to exchange gifts with all the couples to now we pick names and we do a basket for a specific family. Like this year I have uh, Mike and Jeanette, which that is my uh, sister and brother-in-law. And then we do the same on the other side. Um, so I have a couple from there. So all year round, I look for little things that I know their family um, would love to create this basket. Um, and then along with that, you know, we do the, the moms and the dads, but it has taken, instead of here, we have 29 grandchildren now trying to, you know, right. you want to show them you love them and gifts is a good way, but it's not always practical. Um, so for me, it has worked out great. I shop through the year. I'm done my Christmas shopping now and, uh, Christmas presents wrapping has become quite a tradition in our home. Um, my son and I, starting from a very young age, he just loved to wrap. And so um, we take three or four days throughout Advent and during nap time, and now it's two of the kids, now it's Brendan and Sienna, and we get out four or five gifts and we wrap, and I like to wrap them very nicely, so we spend some time. We may even splurge and turn on some Christmas music, but it's such a beautiful thing instead of right near to Christmas feeling like, oh my gosh, you know, all this money, all this shopping. I mean, and that's really not what Advent sh right. should, be, should focused be focused on, on anyways. Right. And you'll have your years, you know. I mean, last year, as most of you know, um, my Rosie was very sick. She had just come home from the convent, and uh, Margie ended up in the hospital, and it was a tough Christmas. And um, so normally after the Christmas, when all the sales go on, I actually will start shopping for the next year. So that mm -hmm. is it. Now, that's only happened in the last, oh, I'd say six years because my kids are older. But um, it was a way to reduce, you know, the stress and just know that you're ready and focus on other things. But last year I was not able to do that. So I've, and, but I've got most of my Christmas shopping done now. 
and Advent hasn't even started. So, um, you know, it's a matter of writing your list and being prepared, really. And I know we have lots of things, you know, on our plate, um, but, you know, we don't, we want to reduce the stress and make Advent what it should be as much as we can. Which brings me to the music. We loved Christmas music growing up. I mean, it was just, you know, it was just um, part of the Christmas season, a beautiful thing when I was young. And so the whole sparse, you know, Advent, no Christmas music, we did that better when the kids were younger, but I really think I would sneak in a Christmas song here and there. <laughs> now, what we do is we, um, you know, we wait a little bit and then actually uh, we will play Christmas music, but just instrumental. And then as it gets closer to, or, but except if we're doing like a big baking day, then we'll put the Christmas music on. But then it's special. You haven't listened to it all through Advent. You're not sick of it. And, um, and then as it gets closer, we loosen up a little bit more. So it's not a real strict thing for us. In fact, if we go overboard, you know, we start, we start to feel a little bit guilty. Like, mm -hmm. okay, hold on. This is Advent, remember? Yeah. And so we pull back. So it, it is important, you know, keep the spirit of Advent. But, you know, work it with your family. I mean, it's all a journey. It's different for each one of us. There's no strict set rule. But, and, and then... Go ahead, Teresa. Anything about the Christmas music? Well, I'm a Christmas music addict, and I <laughs> would listen to it all day long, starting right now. So that's something that I have had to think about and be like, what do I want my kids to be used to? Right. Um, so we've kind of adapted the same ideas over the years. Um, mainly during Advent, we try to keep stuff low key. Um, the I have what I call splurge days, like those days that I will wrap some gifts with the kids, right. will throw on the Christmas music. Or like even yesterday, we were making Reese's peanut butter cups for um, Thanksgiving, and the kids know that Christmas music is a splurge, so can we have some Christmas music? So we did. Or in December, I usually end up having a couple grocery shopping trips during December so that's my time where I don't have the kids and I will turn on the Christmas music right. so certain things the baking is a big one and then we really look forward to it yeah and then also um about the same for us like this year Christmas is on a Wednesday by Sunday we will have the Christmas music on right. like a few days ahead of time that's when I loosen up yes. and it's very close and it really gets us in the spirit and just brings a lot of joy I think yeah and then Christmas comes and we're not sick of the Christmas music yeah. and we keep it going as long as we can I mean and um Christmas week is just just a blast you know so with the Christmas music and all the feasting and things like that. So um, also just a little note on that too. And you can find this stuff on my blog. Uh, my blog is Finer Femininity. But um, there is the uh, 12 Days of Christmas that talks about doing something special each 12 days after Christmas. Um, so there's things like that that, you know, that can help you. But, you know, once again, don't put on too much of a burden on yourself. Pick your few things that you can do focus on those and do them well because if you like I say feel like you have to be the advent queen you know it's just it it can uh, discourage you and you don't want to do that so anyway so the gifts and then okay so then this all builds up then to the greatest moment which is midnight mass and for us I mean there have been years where we didn't make it to midnight mass um it wasn't practical. We're back at it now again because we have uh, more grown-up children. My son, we just signed up for, be, he's going to be thoroughfare uh, at Midnight Mass. And um, so, and not necessarily Midnight Mass, but Christmas Mass. I mean, that's what it's, you know, that's what it's all about, right? So, um, anyway, for Midnight Mass, we try to take naps. It usually doesn't work. And um, we all go to... Uh, midnight mass together and then have snacks afterwards and I usually let some of the kids invite their friends there's usually maybe three or four that come and we spend about an hour 
and actually get to bed probably around three o'clock in the morning and um and then we can sleep in but thoughts about that Teresa? so growing up the midnight mass we looked so forward to it. We were in choir. Um, we would get all gussied up. Our hair would be gorgeous. We'd have on our dresses we found at the thrift shops. So it was a huge part of Christmas. But now, having the kids, and I've had mono in the past, my health, you know, has been shaky off and on. I can't do the midnight mass right. at this point. And so for our family, um, we get an early night. Christmas Eve and then we usually go to one of the earlier morning masses where my son usually serves if he can and the kids are always eager and waiting uh, before the alarm even goes off Christmas morning but uh, for us it has worked out well and then we always read uh, the, the birth of Christ from the Bible um, it was always a tradition to read that before we started opening gifts. But since we don't do the Midnight Mass, we actually usually get in that reading before we even go to Mass, which is really nice because right. it really focuses the kids get up and they're like, baby Jesus, because we have a big, a big crib with a big baby Jesus and they want to hug and kiss baby Jesus. And then we read our story and it just really, there's no gift opening yet because we still have to go to church. So it really centers more around baby Jesus in yeah. the morning. So that's, um, that's a real positive. I mean, I'd love to get back to midnight mass, but for myself, it's not practical. Uh, right now so you just go with the flow you do right. what you can you know at this stage in my life um I think building up to Christmas gratitude is a huge thing it's just uh remembering what we have to be thankful for today like my son was saying he's getting a sore throat and kind of grumpy about it but I says remember we just saw the St. Jude children that have cancer at Christmas time we need to remember how blessed we are to have a common cold or a common right. flu. And then just to spread the joy, we do the cookie baking. And then that has become a tradition in our family. Uh, Christmas Eve, taking the kids to the old people that get forgotten right. or are so lonely. And we show up for 15, 20, 30 minutes and it makes all the difference. So remembering these little things I think make it so beautiful putting together a basket for a family in need, right? Slipping some cash to somebody you know is hard up. These are the things that I love about Christmas that I want to teach my kids and that make it so important and beautiful. Yeah, very special. Very special. What great what great sentiments and what great lessons for the children. Um and as far as the gifts, too, Teresa mentioned, we've always, before we opened our gifts, my husband would read out of the Bible the Christmas story. Last year, um, I think he found, you know, something that was just very relevant, a sermon maybe, or something that he had read about the, the Christmas story and that, and that's what he read to us before we started opening our gifts. So that has always been very special, too. Um, one other uh, thing that we have done is the spiritual Christmas crib. And in the, in the past few years, we made it more simple where we actually, and I have this information in the book and on my blog, but um, we get a poster board. And the spiritual Christmas crib has all the different things that you put in each day and a little prayer and sentiment that you think about during the day. And so we would draw that certain thing, like the first day is the stable, so we draw the stable. The second day, maybe the cobwebs, so we draw the cobwebs in there. When the kids were small, I did the drawing, they colored it in, or they went over it with a Sharpie. Um, now on my blog, I have the, thanks to um, a good friend, Marianne, on my blog, um, I have the cutouts that you can actually just print out, have the kids color, use a glue stick, Put it up on the poster board. Make it easy. But by the end of the season, the the, um, the the whole nativity scene is beautiful. And it's all, you know, done by the children. And and then the little prayers and that that you do. If that's a that's a beautiful custom. And so and it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, I would miss a day or two or I would start late, but you know, we just we've always done that. It, in the past few years we've done it. We've really appreciated it. Last year when Rosie and Margie 
were going through their stuff and I didn't get it up. And Gemma, who was 14 at the time, she really messed it. She tried to do it on her own and it kind of fell by the wayside. So we're gonna, we're going to definitely do it again this year. So, okay, well, and uh, is there anything else, Teresa, about after Christmas? Anything that we've missed? I think there's a couple of things that I'd like to add that yes. my kids love. The <laughs> Advent calendar. And um, that's just where we have, this year we have a big uh, square one. And every day you open one of the kids, they take turns, you open the picture and it shows the different pictures getting ready for Christ. They love that. We do uh, what mom was just talking about. I'm still old fashioned. I'm still writing the little characters, the little donkeys, and then the kids um, color them in. But one of the biggest things I think that is uh, fabulous for my kids is when we were growing up, we did pieces of paper, which were our straw, oh, yes, and, and put it in the manger. So you did a sacrifice. Like, I didn't have butter on my potatoes. Wrote it down, put it in the manger, because you want to make the manger soft and ready for the Christ child. And so a few years into our marriage, the manger is usually only this big and a crush scene. So I had my husband actually make me a big hollowed out log and do sides. So we have a big manger and we have a big baby Jesus yeah. when <laughs> Christmas comes. And we've simplified it because not all my kids can write. Right. And I can't sit there writing all day for right. them. We just use fresh straw. And every time, even if they obey immediately, in fact, that's where a lot of the straws come from. They get to put a straw in. So it takes a lot of straw to fill up this big manger, but they work hard at it. And it just, you know, if they don't want to do something, it'd be, that could be a sacrifice. So then they get a straw. Right. And so it gets, you know, softer and softer. And then um, one year we splurged and bought a beautiful baby Jesus that was bigger on a silk, um, on a silk, pillow and so it's the same thing once the kids all go to bed Christmas Eve the baby Jesus comes out into that big manger that they've made already with their sacrifices and then in the morning is just like we put a little light on it's like Jesus came and it's so beautiful and they always want to kiss the baby Jesus so he's missing a toe and a finger and a little <laughs> curl but I don't care right. it's beautiful right it's a beautiful thing yeah let's all make it special so anyway, okay, well, um, that's our that's our Advent Christmas Catholic charm, and I hope you got something good out of it today, and uh, thanks for tuning in. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Please stop by the Finer Femininity website to enjoy articles on the single life, the married life, raising children, and the spiritual life, all written by solid Catholic authors. You can follow Finer Femininity on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. God bless you, and see you next episode.